Hello, welcome. Today we're going to be working through a very exciting project. We're going to be building a system that predicts which books we'll like. And this is a really exciting project for me because I'm an avid reader and I'm always looking for new books to read. So hopefully it helps me and you both build an interesting project and find some interesting books to read. So let me go ahead and get started by explaining our goals and the data set a little bit. There's a little bit of a complex data set here, so I just want to take a little bit of time to explain what we'll be doing and how we'll be doing it. So our goal is to recommend books. And to do that, we need a list of books that we like, and we need data on book ratings. And we'll use that book rating data and that list of books we like to figure out other books that we might like. So to do this, we can use data from Goodreads. So if you're a reader, you may have heard of Goodreads. It's a website where you can keep track of books that you've read and find recommendations. So even if you don't have a Goodreads account, you can still do this project. But if you do, you will be able to use some of the data that you have on Goodreads to make your recommendations. And we'll get into that in the next video. But for now, basically we'll be using Goodreads book data that was scraped by some researchers at UCSD. And that data is available at this URL. And the reason why we're using this data set instead of the Goodreads API is there is no API. Goodreads ended their API access a couple of years ago. And scraping Goodreads can be quite difficult, especially at the scale that we want to scrape. This data set has hundreds of millions of ratings, which would be very difficult for us to scrape in a reasonable amount of time. So this data set will help us make our recommendations. And there's three main files we'll be working with. The first file is called Goodreads Interactions. So this has three columns that we care about. It has a user ID, so that is a unique ID for each user on Goodreads. It has a book ID, so that's a unique ID for each book on Goodreads. And then it has a rating. So each row tells you how a user rated a particular book. So book ID 948, let's say for example, that is a Harry Potter book that would mean that this user with ID zero has given that book a rating of five. And ratings can go from zero to five. So you can tell if you have enough ratings how books are actually ranking with specific users and with specific groups of users. All right, so that's the first data set. The second data set is Goodreads Books. And this is a JSON file. And this file has millions of lines and each line is metadata about a specific book. So this is an example of one line in this data set. And you can see there is a title, there's some other stuff like the book ID and the ratings count. So ratings count is how many times this book has been rated by users on Goodreads. All right, so the first is user ratings. The second is book metadata. The third data set we're gonna be using is the book ID map. So you may have noticed the book IDs looked a little bit different in the first data set, Goodreads Interactions, the book IDs are small numbers, versus the second data set where the book IDs are very, very large numbers. So this CSV is going to help us map between the book IDs in one data set and the other data set. So we can make sure that we're referring to the same book. So basically this just says, it tells you the book ID in the first data set, and it helps you connect it to the book ID in the second data set. So these are the three data sets we'll be using. And if you go to the website I showed you earlier, the UCSD website, if you scroll down, you'll see these sections at the bottom where you can download these data sets by clicking on them. All right, so the project steps we'll be doing roughly are these three steps. First, we're gonna search for the books. And by that, I mean, we know the books we like, but we don't know their IDs. And in order to really get recommendations, we need to use the data. And to use the data, we need to figure out a way to find the, the book IDs of the books that we like. So we need to build a search engine to search on book titles and find the book ID. So that's gonna be a fun thing to do. Then we need to create our book list. So a list of books that we like, and that is what we'll do by searching using the search engine. Finally, we can use that data and the list of books that we like to recommend books that we might like that we haven't read yet. And we do that by essentially finding all of the users who liked the same books as us and then seeing what other books they liked. 
and we'll use those as recommendations of books we might like to read. So those are roughly the three phases or steps of the project. Let's get started coding now. All right, so we're gonna be using Jupyter Lab. And if you've watched previous videos, this is commonly used by me <laughs> to do these data science tutorials. So the first thing we'll do is we'll create a new notebook in Jupyter Lab, and we will call it search because this is going to be the notebook that we code our search engine in, our book search engine. All right. So before we dive in and code the search engine, let's take a quick look at the data sets we'll be working with. All right. So the first data set we'll be working with is called goodreadsbooks.csv, uh, sorry, .json.gz. This is the data set you saw in the presentation. So wc-l is a command line utility that counts the number of lines in a file. And if you use an exclamation mark in Jupyter Notebook, it runs a command on the command line. So we just ran a command line command to count the number of lines in this Goodreads books file. So we can see we have metadata for about seven and a half million books. All right, now let's see how large this book is in terms of file size. And we can grep Goodreads books. So basically what this command is doing is it is saying, show me the size of all the files in the directory, and then search only for the specific file, Goodreads books. And it doesn't matter that I left off the .gz because even a partial match will still give you the file. So in this case, we can see this file is 1.9 gigabytes. The .gz means it is a gzip file, so it's a zipped file, so it's a compressed file. So if you actually uncompress this, it would be, I think, around 10 gigabytes. So this is a bigger file than we can actually just read in using pd.readjson or readcsv like you might be accustomed to. And the reason why is this file, if you load it in, will take up more than 10 gigabytes of memory. And then if you work with it, it will create copies and could potentially use even more memory than, than 10 plus gigabytes. So we need a more efficient way to work with this because I want you to be able to do this project even if you only have eight gigs of memory. And the techniques could scale, right? Maybe in the future, we wanna work with a much larger book data set. So I'm gonna show you how to work with this in a streaming fashion. And what a streaming fashion is, is instead of reading the whole file into memory at once, like you do if you do pandas.readcsv, we're gonna read it line by line. And that way we're not using that much memory. We're only using enough memory to store a single line at a time. And the way we do that is first we're gonna import the gzip module in Python, and we're gonna use that to open the file. So what this will do is it'll stream the file without unzipping it. So we don't have to use memory to actually go ahead and, and unzip the file up front. All right, so, and then we'll open it in read mode as f. And what we can do then is say line equals f dot read line. So that will read a single line from the file. So let's just see what line is. So as you might remember from the slides, this is a single line in the file and it has metadata about a single book. So title, number of times it's been rated on Goodreads, the book ID, etc. All right, now what we can do is we can actually use the JSON module in Python to, to load that single line. And we do that with the load s function, which basically is load string. So line is a string and it's loading that as a JSON object, which will turn this into a Python dictionary where we can access each of the individual properties. All right, so we can now just scale up that technique. So we're gonna write a function called parse fields, which takes a single line and only returns the fields we care about. So first we'll load the line with JSON, and then we'll just return a few fields. So we want book ID, which is the book ID and the data. So remember when we loaded the line, we saw all the fields here, and book ID is one of them. We also want title, and we'll make it title without series because we, we want to take the simpler title. In this case, there is no series for this book, but some books have a series associated with them, and we want to make sure we don't get that part in the title. 
So we'll take the title without series property as our, as our title. We'll take the number of ratings, which is just ratings count. And then we'll take the URL, which is the Goodreads URL for the book. So this just helps if we want to see what, what the book is and see any, any data on it in Goodreads. And then we'll also grab the cover image, which is nice because we can look at this to make sure we have the right book. All right, so those are the fields we want, and we'll just create a dictionary with only those fields. This will parse a single line. And now what we need to do is create a way to go line by line and parse each line. So we'll again do the gzip.open. Goodreads books. JSON. GZ. All right, so this will open the file again. And what we can do is read every single line in the file using a loop. So we'll say while true, which ordinarily you do not want to do, but in this case is the easiest way to do this. So this will read a single line. Now you do not want to run the code now because this is an infinite loop that will keep going forever. What you want to say is if not line, break. So when, when there is no line or f.readline to operate on, line will equal none and then it will actually break. So what this does is when it reaches the end of the file, it'll end the loop. So now you can hit run and it'll be okay. But we need to do a couple of things before we hit run. First, we need to parse the line. So we're gonna run our parse fields function to parse the line and return the dictionary. Then what we'll do is we'll say, try to turn ratings into an integer. Because what we wanna do is we only wanna take we only want to take books that have more than a certain number of ratings. Because a lot of these books, you haven't looked at the data yet, but I've looked at the data a little bit, and a lot of these books have very, very few ratings. And when they don't have a lot of ratings, it's very unlikely that our users in our, in our interactions data have actually read them. So we can filter them out because they're most likely not going to be recommended books anyways. All right, and then what I'll say is if ratings is greater than 15, then I will add it to our list. So this will only take books with more than 15 ratings, and then it'll add it to this list. So we're cutting down on the size of our data by doing two things. We're only selecting a small amount of fields from, the, from each line, and we're removing a lot of the lines. And that means that books titles is a list that will actually fit in memory, because we're, we're get, just getting rid of a lot of stuff we don't need. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. And uh, I'll explain this block because I didn't. So we, we're trying to convert ratings into an integer. But a lot of times ratings isn't an integer. It's just, it's blank or the field's missing or whatever else. And in that case, it'll throw a value error when you try to turn it into an integer. And if we get a value error, we're just saying, hey, continue the loop. Just ignore this line essentially. All right, so once this is done, what we can do is we can turn this into a data frame. And we can do pandas.dataframe.fromdict books titles. And basically books titles will be a list of dictionaries. So the from dict method will turn each dictionary into a row in the data frame. All right, and then what we'll do is we will turn titles ratings into a numerical column. So that'll let us do comparisons on the ratings column. All right, and once we've done that, I'm getting, this is still running, it's running a little bit longer than I thought it would, but we'll keep that going. The next thing we need to do is think about how we construct our search engine. So when you construct a search engine, you want to be able to minimize your search space as much as possible. And the way we do that is by minimizing the number of characters or the number of potential characters in each title. So what I mean by that is you're gonna have titles that look like this. You're gonna have titles that look like this. You're gonna have titles that look like this that just have weird capitalization. You're also gonna have titles like this one 
WC fields that has periods and colons, etc. The problem with this is if we don't do any, any processing, the search engine will treat these as different, but they're actually the same, right? We want them all to be treated the same because regardless of the capitalization, the underlying concept is still the same, it's Harry Potter, right? And regardless of whether we do WC fields or W.C. fields, the book title is probably referring to the same concept. So we'll create a field called mod title that just modifies the title to minimize that search space and, uh, and minimize the number of potential characters in each title. And this will make the search engine a lot more efficient. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take the title field and we'll go ahead and just replace any characters that don't fall within a certain set. So this is a regular expression and it's saying anything that doesn't fall in this set of characters should be replaced. And this set of characters is anything lowercase a to z, uppercase a to z, or zero to nine, so the digits, or a space. And then just replace that with nothing, which essentially means get rid of it. All right, okay, that is not defined because I did not run these cells. All right, now let's take a look at titles. And we can see here's a title and here's the modified title. So we've here, we've just removed the comma and the parentheses. We've removed some of the other characters in these, in these titles. All right, we need to do a little bit more processing here on this modified title. So the next thing we'll do is we will go ahead and lowercase it. All right, and then we'll remove any spaces that are in a row. So if there's three spaces in a row, we'll just replace that with a single space. And the goal of all of this is to make the search engine a little more efficient, a little less memory intensive. And all right, the way we'll do this, the replacement, is we'll do str.replace, and we'll do backslash s plus. So this says any spaces in a row, replace with a single space. STR is the pandas string accessor, so it lets you access all the string manipulation methods in pandas, and this is just a string replacement method that's replacing anything with multiple commas in a row, uh, multiple spaces in a row with one space. I forgot if I run that. Titles. Gotta remember my plurals there. All right, so that's now done. Let's take a look at titles. All right, so these titles are now all lowercase. Any spaces that are in a row have been turned into a single space and we've removed all of these extraneous characters. All right, the final thing we'll do is we'll remove any title that now is null. And we will do that by checking the length and only taking the titles, the rows where mod title, the length of mod title is greater than zero. So if the length is zero, there's nothing for the search engine to search for, so it's not gonna be a useful result anyways, so we'll just get rid of it. And then we're gonna use this in future sessions. So we'll just dump this to JSON using the pandas to JSON method. And let's take a look at titles again. So we now have this mod title, which is gonna be what we're gonna build our search engine around. All right. We're very, very close. Before we do the next part, I need to explain a couple of search engine concepts. So I'm gonna jump back to the slides and we'll go ahead and just talk about a couple of concepts here. So let's say you wanna search a list of titles. Let's say these are the titles. Someone named their book, called their book The. We're not very creative, but you know. Another one's called Harry the Potter, another one's called The Harry. Let's say we wanna search these. And if you wanna search just three titles, it's really easy to look at them and just, just figure out which one you want but we have millions of titles. So in our case, we can't manually look through and find a match. We need a search engine to do it for us. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use a term frequency inverse document frequency matrix because in order to search through results, you need to turn the titles into a set of numbers. And then the computer can match that set of numbers to a search query, which is also a set of numbers, and then figure out how similar they are. So the first thing we need to do is construct a term frequency matrix. So you can see the titles down here on the left. All the term frequency matrix does is it takes all of the unique words across all of your titles and turns each one into a column in the matrix. And you might see now why lowercasing, removing the extraneous characters helps. 
because it minimizes the number of columns in the matrix. All right, and then you go through each title, and then if, if that word exists, the word for the column exists in the title, you, you add one. If it doesn't, you add zero. So here, Potter is zero, Harry is zero, the is one. Here, all three are one. Here, Potter is zero, and the other two are one. Because Harry exists in this, in this, the exists in all three, Potter only exists in this. The word Potter only exists in this type. So that's your term frequency matrix. Then we construct an inverse document frequency matrix. And I'm not gonna go into a ton of depth here. The idea is you minimize the impact of very common words. So the occurs in every single one of our, our titles. So if you type, if you use it to search, it's not gonna be super valuable because it's just gonna give you all of the results. So the idea is to make words that appear infrequently in your titles more meaningful to your search engine. So it's essentially the log of the number of titles divided by the number of titles that particular word appeared in. So here it's the log of three, here it's the log of three halves, here it's the log of three over three. All right, and then you multiply those together to get your TF IDF matrix. And that is just the term frequencies multiplied by the inverse document frequencies. And then when you want to search, let's say we type in the search query Harry Potter. This actually should be lowercase. Actually, we would write code to lowercase it. So you could, you could put in an uppercase query and it'd be fine. What you would do is turn that into a TF IDF vector using the same process you already used. So you would end up with saying, okay, Harry is in this title, Potter is in this title, the is not. So you'd end up with these two values. And then you would compare it to your titles. You would essentially compare this vector to each row in your matrix. And then you would find the most similar row, which in this case is the second row. And then the third row is the second most similar. And the first row has no similarity. There's, there are no words that overlap between our vector and this vector. And that's how you would build your search engine. I know that's a very high level view of a very complex concept, but I do encourage you to read more about TF-IDF. It's a really cool technique for search. All right, so now we will dive back in and use what we just learned to build our search engine. All right, luckily in Python, we have this amazing library support and libraries do almost everything for us if we want them to. So in this case, scikit-learn, which is a machine learning library for Python, already has something that does what I just showed you, it builds that TF-IDF matrix. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll create an instance of this vectorizer class, and this vectorizer takes a list of strings and turns it into that TF-IDF matrix. So TF-IDF is just vectorizer.fitTransform, and what we work on is our mod titles, the ones that are lowercase and nicely transformed. All right, so let's run that mod title. Man, pluralization is getting me today. Okay, so while that runs, let's go ahead and build the next piece, which is what I showed you in the slides. We need to add some code to turn a search query into a vector and then match it up against the matrix and then do a comparison. So to do our comparison of the vectors, we're gonna use a metric called cosine similarity. And scikit-learn also has this built in which is very nice. So cosine similarity. And then we're also gonna import NumPy. Uh, I'll tell you why once we get to it, but I just wanna do the import now. And then we will also import RE, which is the Python regular expression library. All right, so what we'll do is we'll say, hey, our query is going to be, let's, it's called a fire upon the deep. One of my favorite books. And, what we'll say is processed is re.sub. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same processing that we did with our mod title with our search query. So if you'll remember, we replaced all of the non A through Z, zero through nine characters, and then we did some other processing. So we'll just do the same thing here. So re.sub is how you do that in Python. And we will also lowercase our query. So first we'll, we'll process our query. Then we'll turn our query into a vector using the vectorizer. And there you go. So we'll transform our query and then we'll find the similarities. 
using the cosine similarity function. And we'll pass in our vector, query vec, and then we will pass in the TF IDF matrix. And this will basically search the TF IDF matrix for your search query and tell you how much each row in the matrix is similar. And we'll run flatten there so we get a nice NumPy array. All right, so let's run this and I'll show you what similarity looks like. So this is just a big array. Sorry, it's a big, essentially you can think of it as a vector or a list. It's a big list of similarities saying the first row of the TFIDF matrix is this similar to your query, second row is this similar, et cetera. So what we need to do now is get from these numbers to the actual books that are similar to our search query. And the way we can do that is we can use the numpy r partition function. I told you we would, I would tell you why we imported numpy. And basically what we're doing here is we are finding the 10 largest similarity values using arg partition. And the reason we're using arg partition is we want, actually want to find the indices. We don't just want to find the values. Uh, we want to find the indices of the 10 highest similarity values. So this will give us the indices. And then we can use those indices to index titles, which is very cool. And this will give us the row, the book title rows with the most similarity to our search query. All right, let's run this, see what we have. So that's results. All right, I searched for a fire upon the deep and you can see there are actually a few different books called a fire upon the deep. This is kind of a weakness with this data. It has a lot of duplicate books for some reason. Maybe Goodreads actually has the duplicate books, I'm not sure, but we need to actually solve this. And the way we'll solve it is only by taking, by only taking the row with the highest number of ratings. So, so we'll sort the values on the number of ratings using the pandas sort values method. And then what we'll do is we'll wrap this all up into a function so it's really easy to search for different things. All right, so do that. And then what we'll do is we'll just return the top results. Great, okay, so now let's search. I'll search for another one of my favorite books, East of Eden by John Steinbeck, highly recommend. I forgot the vectorizer, so let's run that. Okay, I left query here, should not have done that. Okay, East of Eden. So we now see the top result is the East of Eden book with the most ratings. So that's great. So what we would do is now what we can do is take this book ID and make a list of like books using this book ID, these book IDs and store these book IDs as strings. All right, what's another book I like? I like Homegoing a lot. It's a recent book. So you can see our search engine is finding the most relevant results, which is very cool. Now, one thing you might notice is, hey, there's a lot of books called Homegoing. It's, it, it's a pretty generic title, but I don't have a way to verify that this is actually the book that I, that I care about. So something we can do now is use a really, really cool uh, pandas thing that I just found. And basically it's called a styler. And when you display a data frame, it lets you style the columns with HTML. So we're gonna write some HTML. Uh, don't worry too much if you aren't experienced with HTML or, or don't, don't really get how to build HTML elements because you don't really need to know that for the rest of this tutorial. But what I'm doing now is I'm essentially saying, hey, we're gonna style this column by building, by using this function to essentially build an HTML element for each of the, each of the column entries. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you call style format, and you say format the URL column using this make clickable function. So it'll essentially pass the, the value in the column into this function. And it'll use this, uh, it'll, it'll actually use this HTML to render it. So let's run that. Now we search for home going again, and we get a nice URL. So I could actually click on this, which I will, and I'll go to Goodreads, and I can see, is this the right home going? And it is, it's the book that I wanted. So I can verify that. Another way I can verify it is by displaying the cover image, which you can also do 
with this with the nice style method in pandas. So what I'll do is I'll return just a, an image. And uh, HTML tags are kind of weird to write <laughs> in, uh, in Python code. But there you go. All right, let's run that. And uh, the way we will we'll make this work is we'll say to the cover image column, apply the show image function. All right, so now we actually get the covers. So we know if we have the right book or not. And this also answers a little bit of a mystery of why we have so many different entries for the same book. I think each edition of the book has a different cover and possibly is listed as a separate entry. All right, so now what you can do is just go ahead and search and ensure that your liked books list has books that you're searching and that you enjoy. So make sure these are books that you would rate a four or a five out of five, ideally a five. So yeah, just search for a few books I like. All right, so you have to make a list of at least two or three, but it does, you don't have to worry about adding too many to this list. You probably don't want more than 10 at this stage just to minimize computation time. All right, so let's pause now. We just built a search engine to search through our books. And the next thing we need to do is actually use these to build some recommendations. So I'm gonna create another file, which I will call recommendations. Feel free to use a more clever name if you, if you wanna come up with one. And we, we'll, what we'll do is use our liked books list from before to make some recommendations. All right, so I did some searching on my own and I will, this will be my liked books list. And what we're gonna do now is use that Goodreads interactions file I showed you where it has each user and how much they liked each book to create some recommendations for us. And we'll do two steps. First, we'll find all of the users who like the same books as us. Then we'll find all of the books they liked because we will probably like the same books as them because we probably have similar taste. At least that's the assumption. We'll see how well it works. And to do this, we need to use this bookidmap.csv because I mentioned to you the JSON file with the book metadata and the CSV file with the interactions and the ratings for the books have different IDs. So we need this map to make sure we can map between one ID and the other. All right, so we'll read this, this file in, and we'll also read this file in in a streaming fashion, book ID map.csv, R. We'll read this in as F, and we'll again use a loop while true. This one you probably could read in all in one shot, but now that we're streaming, you might as well continue that. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll say CSV ID and book ID equals blind.split. All right, so basically what this is doing is it's reading each line in the file, it's splitting the line on the comma, and it is assigning the first part before the comma to CSV ID, and the second part after the comma to book ID. And then what we can do is the CSV book mapping CSV ID equals book ID. So this dictionary, all the keys will be the CSV IDs, which are the IDs in the interactions file, and the values will be the IDs in the, in the file we just worked with, uh, the book metadata file. And this will help us map between, between both. So we can just take a look at the CSV book mapping, and we now have about 2 million keys. So we have about 2 million books that we can map between the data sets. All right, now let's start to work with a Goodreads interactions data set. And we'll again use wc.l to just look at the number of lines in this file. This file has a lot of lines. It has 228 million lines. And if you look at the size of this, this file is four gigs. So we could potentially read this into pandas, but if we did that, we might have to make copies of it and, and do other things in pandas to manipulate it, which would use a decent amount of memory. 
So I'm again going to use our streaming methods to work with this data. So what we'll say is overlap users is a set, and a set is a Python data structure where every element is unique. So basically a set could have one, two, three, four, but it could not have one, one, two, three, four, because each element is unique. So we'll open our Goodreads interactions file. And we'll again read it in a streaming fashion. So we'll say while true, line equals f dot readline. If not line, break. Always remember to put that break in or you'll get an infinite loop. And we'll split up, we'll split up each line on the comma again. CSV ID. Underscore just means we don't care about the field. I could type out a variable name, but underscore is the Python convention when you're splitting and you just don't care about this particular field. So this will give us the user ID, the CSV ID, and the rating. And what we'll say is if user ID in overlap users, continue. So this means if the user ID, basically if we've already added this user to our overlap user set, we don't need to keep processing. And we'll again try to parse our rating out as an integer. And if we get a value error, we will continue. And then what we'll do is we will turn the CSV ID into a book ID. Because the book ID is what we use to do things like create our list of liked books. And then what we can say is if the book ID is in our liked books, so if, this, if the book for this row is a book we like, and the rating the user gave to this book is greater than or equal to four, so if they like this book, add this user to overlap users. All right, this is gonna take a while to run, so before I run it, let me just do head. I wanna show you a couple of lines from this file. All right, line split, it's not defined. Line dot split, not line underscore split. Liked books is not defined. Well, I should have run this. All right, great, so this is running. And I did head Goodreads interactions.csv. And Goodreads interactions.csv is the file that has how each user rated each book. And if you remember, a row here is a rating for one book. So each user for each book they rated has one row. So as we go through line by line, basically what we're saying is we check the user, uh, sorry, we check the book and we say, is this book in our set of liked books? And if it is, we say, hey, this user might have similar tastes in in books to us. So let's check to see the rating. And if they rated the book highly, then what we say is, hey, this user does have similar taste in books to us. So let's add them to a set of users with similar taste in book, in similar taste in books. So this set will contain any user who read the same book as us and rated that book highly. All right, the next thing we'll need to do is find all of the books that those users read. So we'll again loop through this Goodreads interactions data set. So I'll just copy and paste. And what we'll do is we'll split up the data again. Actually, I'll just copy and paste this splitting code. And we'll say if user ID in overlap users, we again parse out the book ID from the from the CSV ID. And then we'll add this to rec lines. So we'll add user ID, book ID, and I think rating is what we want to add. Yes, rating. So we'll add these to rec lines. So rec lines will only contain books that users who liked the same books as us have read. So why did we do this all in one loop? It's because you may not find a book that the a user has read that is in the likes book list until late in the user's book set. So for example, here, none of these, yeah, none of these are this. Okay, these are all user ID zero. Let's say book 941 is in your liked book set. So you'd have to iterate down until this row to add your book to overlap users. So you'd miss all these other books that this user read. So that's why we have to write two loops to do this. All right, so rec lines will contain all of the potential books that we might want to read. So all of the potential recommendations. So what we have to do next is figure out a way to rank the recommendations in these rec lines. 
So we'll import pandas and we'll turn rec lines into a data frame because it's just a little bit easier to work with. And we'll pass in some column names and rating. All right, and then we'll just make sure book ID is a string. And we'll use the as type method in pandas and as type string. All right, so this will just turn our recommendation lines into a data frame. And then once we've done that, we can take a look at our top recommendations. And in order to do this, we'll use the value counts method. And this will basically go through our data frame and say, hey, which book ID occurs the most in our data frame? And I wish, I wish this was running a little bit faster so I could show this to you. But basically what this does is it looks at, it counts up how many times each book ID occurred and it shows you the most common ones. So our top recommendations will be our book IDs that occurred the most frequently. All right, and then the next thing we can do is go ahead and once we figured out what our top recommendations are, we're left with essentially this. We're left with only the book ID and the value count. So we now need to get from the book ID to a title. So the way we can do that is we can read in our file from before called books and titles. I think that I stored that as JSON. Yep. Okay. And then what we'll say is books titles book ID equals as type string. Just making sure that everything is, is the same data type. And then what I wish we could do right now is take a look at the first few rows of that, but we're still running. Okay, I made a small mistake with my CSV book mapping function. I forgot to run line.strip. And what this does is it removes any new line characters in the line. So let's go ahead and run this. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and rerun our two functions here. And they should now have the correct length. Okay, now that our code has finished running, we can take a look at the length of overlap users, and we can see how many users liked books that we also liked. And we can see that's about 2,000. And we can look at how many total books those users read and rated a four or above. And that is quite a lot of books. That's 1.5 million books. So we will need to do a little bit of filtering before we can actually use these recommendations to actually give us our next books to read. So let's go ahead and run the code we wrote earlier. This is just read, uh, reading our recommendation lines into a data frame, finding the top recommendations, and then reading our book titles in so we can start to combine our recommendations with the book titles so we can see which titles are the most recommended because right now we just have the book IDs. All right, so what we can do is we can say pandas has some amazing methods. So what we say is, hey, dot is in top ranks. So what this does is it finds all of the book titles where the book ID is in these top recommendations. So our 10 most recommended books in our set. All right, so we ran that and we did not find anything. So let's investigate and figure out why that happened. So let's see what's in top recs. All right, so we can see top recs here. So the problem here is top recs is the value counts and the book IDs are actually the index. So we need to add some code here to actually get the values of the index from this and use those. So let's go ahead and run that. And great, we now have the top 10 books that were most like that were most uh, read and liked by people who also read books that we liked that's a really confusing sentence but these books are hopefully books that we will enjoy reading now you may notice an issue with these books these books are all very very popular 
So there isn't a lot of difference between the most popular books and these books. So what we need to do is figure out some way to select books that were more popular in our set. So users who read the books that we liked, what books did they like that weren't necessarily popular among all users? So we're trying to find the books that differentiate people like us from other folks who, who have more generic tastes, right, in books. Because right now this list is very generic. This is just a list of books that everyone kind of likes and, and reads. So let's figure out how to do that. So what we'll do is we will find, instead of just looking at the top, we will look at all recommendations. We'll do value counts on all of the recommendations. So this will just give us a data frame of how many times each book appeared in our set. All right, and then we will convert this to a data frame. Right now it's a series. And we will make the index a column because the index is the actual book ID, which is what we care about. So right now we can see that we now have the index. Book ID is, is named incorrectly. Book ID is actually the count each book, how many times each book appeared among the recommendations. And then index is the actual book ID. So let's go ahead and rename our columns. Book ID, and then we will call this book count. So this is the number of uh, times this book appeared in our set of recommendations. So let's take a look again, and our columns are correct. Okay, and then let's look at, we can look at the top five. Actually, we don't need to, because we just did. So let's go ahead and continue. All right, so now we need to just merge this set with our book types. So we'll say all recs equals all recs dot merge books titles, and we'll do an inner merge. So an inner merge means if, if the data doesn't exist in both, get rid of the row. So we're going to merge on book ID. So if the book ID exists in all recs, but it doesn't exist in books titles, it's going to get rid of it and vice versa. So it has to appear in both, and we're gonna merge on the book ID. Uh, if you are familiar with SQL, it is very similar to a SQL join, how it works and conceptually. All right, so we see now we've merged this, this book ID column that we just computed from our recommendations and how many times the book appeared in our recommendations. So, and we've merged that with the actual title. So we can see which books we are being recommended now. All right. So now we can create a score, which we'll use to sort these recommendations. So we'll create a score column. And what this score will be is it'll be the book count. So the book count is how many times, uh, of all the users who liked books that we liked, how many of them also liked this book? So we'll look at that. And then what we'll do is we'll actually penalize this based on how popular the book was in the in the general set. So in the general set of recommendations, ratings tells us how many people actually rated the book. So the more ratings a book has, the more popular that book is. So you can see The Hunger Games has like 4 million ratings. Very, very popular book. Whereas uh, some of these books have much fewer ratings, so they're much less popular on Goodreads. So what this does is it, if a book is very popular in our set, and less popular on Goodreads, it's going to be more highly recommended to us. So we're looking for books that are popular among users like us, but aren't necessarily popular in a, in a more general set of, of users. All right. And now let's, uh, let's sort and we'll do an ascending sort. And that, that will show us the top 10 recommendations based on this new score that we've created. All right, so these look a little more tailored to us. So these three books were actually books that I listed as liked books, so they've shown up on the top. But there's a lot of other books here also that have fewer ratings. So these are books that are popular, but they're not the most popular books, which means they are probably like more likely to be tailored to our taste specifically. All right, now we can specifically try to remove some of these books that have very, very few ratings. So we can make something called popular recommendations. And what we can do is we can look at book count, not just count, book count. So we can look at book count and we can say, let's only take the recommendations where book count is greater than 75. And we will sort on score again. 
and we'll say ascending equals false. All right, so these will be our recommendations sorted in order of score, but the ones that have more than 75 recommendations among users like us. All right, now we can use the two functions from earlier um, in order to, I'll clean this up a little bit. All right, and then uh, we can use these two functions to actually display these recommendations in a really nice format. So what we'll do is we'll say popular recs, and we'll filter out the popular recs where the book ID is in our liked book set uh, using dot is in. So this just prevents us from seeing books that we've already read and we already liked. And then we'll take the first 10 recommendations here, and then we will format this uh, in the same way we did before. So I'm not going to type this out. I'll just copy and paste that format code so you don't have to watch me type that long dictionary out. And let's run that. All right, so these are our top 10 recommendations. And we can click on them on Goodreads, we can see the covers, and uh, we, can, we can see if we actually want to read these or not. All right, so we've come a really long way in this. First, we built a book search to identify, to find the book ID from the book title. And that was, that involved a lot of reading files in a streaming fashion, creating this, this matrix using the vectorizer, and then doing a little bit of processing to create the actual search function. Then we were able to create a list of books that we like, and then we use that to go ahead and actually find who liked the same books as me and what books did they like. And then we were able to actually rank those books and come up with some recommendations. All right, so we've come a really long way here, but there's actually a lot more we can do. And in the next video, what we'll do is we'll actually learn how to improve the quality of our recommendations. We'll use a technique called collaborative filtering to actually create more personalized recommendations for us. So please join me next time for that. And thank you for tuning in.